Dr. Eric Karkoschka says it was hit by huge storms, really big, big changes. Then in a more typical NASA statement where it sounds a lot more boring, they say, well, it's just a seasonal brightness change. We don't really understand it. Now look at all this mess over here. This is what was happening in 2004. So this is, we're going to show you what it looks like originally. And now this is what we got now. It's really visible over here. So see no features, yeah. and oh, now you're uh, seeing uh, all this stuff here. In 1989, Neptune had hardly any bright clouds. But check this out. This is the average brightness of the whole planet from 96 to 2002. This is zero rotation, a quarter rotation, half, three quarters. This is in the near-infrared range. This all has happened in six years. And ever since 2002, NASA has not said anything more about this, which is very interesting. Now, I'm going to show you how this evolves over the last few years. This is the color we started with. This is 1996, 1998, and now we're going to go to 2002. It's very interesting how much it's changing in six years. And when we go to Pluto, we're seeing a 300% increase in the atmospheric pressure. And NASA is calling this global warming. So this tells us that the Earth changes are not unique to the Earth. Now, we're also seeing on Earth a continuing rise in earthquake activity. You look at earthquakes that are 2.5 and higher, and you see a 400% increase between 1973 and 1998. This is caused by the energy coming from the sun. This is the same thing, but now we're seeing it with volcanoes. 1875 to 1993. This is about 50% of all the volcanoes in the world. And each of them have been studied this entire time, every day. So this again could not be caused by automobile transportation. Sea level is also rising, of course. The surface temperature is rising. Tornado activity is going way up in the United States. In the first half of May 2003, there were over 400 tornadoes alone. All different natural disasters are going way up. The economic losses from natural catastrophes is going way up. This is a diagram that shows you how much heat there was on the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. This is 1985. How much red there is shows you how hot it is. This is what we see in 1999. It's warming up from the bottom. But these scientists have a different explanation. They say that the sun is warming up the surface of the ocean, hot water molecules are sinking down to the bottom. So the next time you want to boil a pot of water, just get a hair dryer. <laughs> We're also seeing the same thing happening with salt coming into the ocean. Where is all the salt coming from? One of the things we learn is that this new energy field creates matter. These particles that you see on the planets are being created out of empty space. Obviously, they're also coming from particles from the sun. But the conventional energy from the sun could not be warming the Earth from the inside. It's a whole new energy field we're talking about. The astronauts also notice these clouds, which are called noctilucent, as they fly over the Earth. They are now seeing much more of these clouds than they ever did before. And we're honored to have Dr. Brian O'Leary here, NASA astronaut. Why don't you well, stand we up? Dr. Brian O'Leary, give him a big hand. When I build my first UFO, you can take a ride and look at the clouds. All right. Also, we saw this appear in 1998 in the Earth's magnetic field. It had interstellar matter in it which had never appeared in the Earth's magnetic field before. They needed to come up with a name for it. So after a very important think tank meeting, great deal of thought, they said, uh, New Belt. <laughs> and there you have it right there, the New Belt. It's quite a pithy name. They're also noticing surprise... <laughs> They're also noticing surprisingly rapid changes in the Earth's... <laughs> you got to stop laughing, or... <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink some water, okay? <laughs> okay, <clears throat> yeah. 
Some water too? <clears throat> I'm good, I'm good. I already have drank too much, I think that's the problem. <laughs> See that? <laughs> so what we're seeing is the Earth's core is actually having very rapid change. Magnetic field is changing inside the Earth, that's right on the National Geographic website. And Paulina Zaliski should know that we should trust the National Geographic. That's why they published her story in 2003 and it became so famous. And now everyone knows about Atlantis under the Cuban Sea. So this is what I was talking about. We have to unify to save the world. These changes are creating a mass awakening on Earth. And we can now see that greenhouse gases are not enough to be causing these changes throughout the solar system. But NASA is completely covering this up. I've showed you every piece of data that they gave us about this. But I'm the first person in the world who put this all together like this. And again, we're seeing more and more dust coming in from the galaxy. This is the European Space Agency from 2003 saying that. So does this change that's heating up the whole solar system affect our minds and the life on the planet? Is that what the crop circles were trying to tell us with the 2012 and with the DNA crop circles? Is that the symbol of the pregnant mother goddess? This brings us into a whole area of science called consciousness science. Is consciousness a living, active, and transferable source of energy? Meaning it's not just stuck in here, but it radiates. Even the mainstream media is starting to accept ESP as scientifically valid. And I'm working on a film with the man who wrote the movie Contact about just this. And this is the first time I've publicly announced that. Und Thank you. <laughs> so, if we want to establish that life might be coming from an energy field, we'll start with the smallest form of life. And that, of course, is bacteria. Bacteria are found in Antarctic ice, inside volcanoes, nuclear reactors. They can even survive in space. Bacteria were brought back to life from 10 million years under the ice in Antarctica. We don't normally think of a life form as something that could be frozen for 10 million years and come back to life. But what if life comes from an energy field and you warm it up and then the energy field comes back in? Some strains of bacteria can create photosynthesis almost in the dark. Some bacteria actually live on nuclear radiation or infrared light. They've actually been discovered inside volcanoes and miles underneath the floor of the ocean. Question is, did they all originate from other living bacteria? In the Darwinian model, that's what it has to be. You can't get bacteria unless you have other living bacteria that happened first. But this model does not hold up for many, many reasons. This scientist's name is Dr. Wick Rama Singh. And what he discovered is, that the material inside comets is biological. Our solar system has billions and billions of comets. He has the theory that life on Earth may have come here from the bacteria that we found inside dust from comets. Now, in no way is Dr. Crick trying to say anything by posing next to a brain. There's no hidden statement about his level of intelligence here. He is one of the two people who discovered the DNA molecule. He proved that DNA is much, much too complicated to have evolved randomly. It's as if every word of the Encyclopedia Britannica fell out of the sky and it all arranged perfectly as it hit the ground. He turned his telescope and looked at the dust in the galaxy. And he found that 99.9% .9 of all that dust looks like bacteria in its light signature, which is Howard Hughes' worst nightmare. Space is filled with germs. <laughs> Don't go to space. Geht nicht in den Weltraum. <laughs> Recently, this was announced in mainstream media, space dust of bacteria found in another solar system. They found it in a disk of red dust around a star 220 light years away. So, is it true that there is some sort of energy in space that would change our DNA? The Earth's magnetic field is very powerful and it shields us from a lot of this energy. But what happens when you leave the Earth's magnetic field? If this energy does the same thing that we saw in those Russian pyramid experiments, Come do you remember what it said about agricultural seeds in the pyramid? That's right, 400% more yield from the seeds. So what do you think would happen if you sent seeds into space? Do you think those plants might change? Well, we're going to get to that in just a second. <laughs> 